Kia ora Terence, lovely to be back here at the hostel. How was the InZone project for the boys 2012? Honestly, it was an amazing year for us. I am completely overwhelmed by how blessed um, and privileged we've been in 20, um, 2012. Several of the boys that in the, within the first 10 weeks, just like the previous year, um, move up in their classes. We had, it must have been about six boys, and um, Peyton Tiplin uh, was the leader amongst those boys who jumped, um, I think he jumped three or four classes, and um, he had a high aggregate in, in the first term, and he carried that right through the year. Peyton Tiplin was amongst the latest group of boys to join the end zone project and gives credit to the people who mentored him during the year for his success. Matua, Terence and all the fires and matuas encouraging us. It's really done really done a lot to me for my, for my life and it's really put a different perspective on how I think about God and how the impact he has on all our lives and it's really helped a lot. We had a total of 14 boys cross um, the school's prize giving and um, that was absolutely amazing and, and a lot of people would probably think oh that was you know contributed to sports but only two of those were for sports the rest of them academics and, and character and excellence. So we had one boy who became prefect and then was nominated and um, made a pre uh, school prefect in term one and, and carried out through the year. We had actually two boys that were nominated and one that actually was appointed as a school prefect and so we um, Oh, we, we celebrated that um, because that is a, a victory to, to have Maori and Pacific Island boys on that level of leadership within the school. And we had one boy who also in the fourth form who received the Character and Excellence Award um, at the prize given as well. Um, several of the boys captain teams from volleyball to league to rugby. <laughs> and so they made their presence really known in the school as well as um, the Kapahaka performances. They taught the entire year nine and year ten boys the school haka and then they battled it out on the day of our prize giving which was quite um, quite awesome and then uh, we have a fourth, that same fourth form boy who received that prize um, we also he received the leadership award for the hostel um, outstanding um, young man John Kirk Manikia he, he would be the boy that you if you can remember and 20, um, 2011 that jumped seven levels in the first ten weeks of school wow. <laughs> academically and he's continued to progress and he, he is another boy that passed all of his school exams. Um, so to really see them to um, gain that faith in God to believe and then actually put it to, to apply it in their everyday life um, has been amazing um, for so many of us to see. And, and, and I think New Zealand could be proud of what these boys are doing and, and the contributions that they're going to make back to this country when they become leaders in the future. Last year, I spoke with one of the new students to the program, Nimi Asu, who told me that he wanted to become a professional sportsman. I spoke with him again one year on. How are those goals coming along? Um, they're coming along good. Um, um, yeah, I've been playing sport for grandma. I played rugby, um, athletics. Oh, I did athletics, um, touch, and yeah, it's going good. <laughs> Have you got new goals or are they still the same? Um, yeah, definitely keep that goal, but yeah, just, um, I've got other dreams, but they're developing because I'm still quite young, I think, and not sport goals, but academic goals for my future, so yeah. I just really want to do well in fifth form because that's my, um, that's the year where everything counts, your exams count um, for your qualifications. And yeah, just want to focus a lot on that. And maybe when I'm going through the years, um, I'll find out what I, what I, would, what I definitely want to do. Um, yeah, when I leave school. One of the mentors for the boys living at the United Māori Mission Hostel in Auckland has been housemaster Notisi Mangele. He's been shepherding the boys through changes in their lives, while also coping with challenges in his own life. So at the beginning of the third term, I was waiting heart surgery for a few years and they called me up and told me to go in the next week and that was right at the beginning of the third, third term. I was supposed to get a repaired uh, replacement valve for my heart and um, when the doctor opened me up, the surgeon opened me up, they were able to repair it. Yeah, and that's, I put that down to God, that's awesome. 
the year progressed and we had a lot of great people who came out to um, just to come by and, and, and show some, some um, auto hot to our boys and the Prime Minister was one of them. He came by and it was um, really fantastic to hear the story of how he at 11 years old decided he wanted to be the Prime Minister and to hear him say, you know, my mom told me to go out and become it. Not lots of things. What I am is the 38th Prime Minister of New Zealand and told the boys, you know, you may be the 48th, you know, so, you know, whatever you believe you want to do, just go out and do it. And so we've had a really, really fantastic um, year in 2012, and um, a lot of it, it was really teaching the boys um, that through Christ we can do all things and that nothing is impossible for God to do. And I think that message from the beginning, um, the boys grabbed a hold of it and it resonated with them. Whenever they were sitting in their classrooms, whenever they were on the rugby fields, or whenever they were in any kind of competition, that's, that's what they grabbed a hold of and ran with. So it led to us having a very, very successful year in 2012. You were named as a recipient of the Vodafone World of Difference Award. How did you feel about being a recipient of that award? I'm excited, humbled, but very proud to be a recipient. And that's um, actually helping, um, will help the End Zone Project uh, and, and these boys in 2013. Um, as you, you probably are aware of, in 2014 is when we start End Zone Girls. And so part of my role the difference year will be to help um, do the scoping and to do the groundwork of getting the project ready for the girls to come on board. And of course, the girls won't live on site with the boys, and so just making sure that the distance is good, the boundaries are set, and that we could all um, kind of focus in on getting the same growth and, and, and as we provide this opportunity for Maori Pacific Island girls. And, and the same, the same cri criteria we have for the boys would be for the girls. Those that are looking to, to progress in their education, looking to be leaders, and um, looking to make a difference in New Zealand. Mania Clark with that story. As those words of the Hakka say, reach for the stars, reach for the moon to achieve your dreams. And as United Maori Mission Director Terence Waller said during that interview, he's in the process of setting up an in-zone project for Maori and Pacific Island girls who'd like the opportunity of attending Epsom Girls Grammar in Auckland next year. So if you'd like to find out more information about that project, log on to the UMM website, which is www.umm.org.nz. Again, that web address is www.umm.org.nz. Thank you.